Hello everyone! In this video, I'm going to show you how I use Bamboozle on Class In and the different ways you can choose to use Bamboozle on Class In. So keep in mind, I'm not going into the specifics of playing the games with my students. This is more just a technical, like how do I present the Bamboozle games on class in so I can use them with my students. So there are three main ways you can share Bamboozle on class in. And you might already know these ways, but I'm gonna go in a little bit more detail of the best way to do it and why you would want to use one over the other, the benefits of each one. So of course, the first way is using the class in browser. So this is the way I use most any type of interactive lessons or web-based lessons. I use the browser, which is right here in my toolbox, but <clears throat> I've learned that the browser is not always the best way to present interactive things like videos or things with a lot of movement and action in them. And the reason for this is the browser, even though it looks perfect to you as the teacher, the videos stream perfectly, but if you've ever tested it out with a student, so what I do is I always test everything with my iPad as a student. That way I can see what the student sees. And every time I've ever tested the browser, and this is in my home with 5G internet, and I know most of my students do not have 5G internet, anytime I've ever used the browser, it's laggy on the student side. So that means especially videos, anything with animations, they're super, super laggy. And even though our students will never say anything, <laughs> they don't seem to be bothered by it, I know it's there. And the reason that can be um, bad for bamboozle is they might miss important animations. So for example, I tested it with the World Pup Soccer. And when I was watching it on my iPad as the student, sometimes I didn't even see the ball be kicked into the net because there was a lag as I was kicking the ball. So the student might be like, huh, what happened? So I realized that the browser isn't always the best for interactive animation type games, but you can still use it. And I did use it with some of my students in the beginning, but uh, I'm not a fan of how it looks on their side, but you might not be bothered by that. Your students might not be bothered by that. So it might not be a big deal for you. It is the most convenient way to use Bamboozle because all you have to do is open the browser and you can even save the link for the game ahead of time. So if you have, and I'm gonna open the Bamboozle. So if you have the free version of Bamboozle, you can simply just copy the link, whatever game you chose. I just picked a game here, Tongue Twister. You can just copy the link, paste it into the browser, and you can play the game because you don't have to be signed in to play for free if you have the free version because you only have access to the free games anyway. So you don't even have to be logged in. So of course you won't be able to play all the locked games, but you wouldn't be able to play even if you were logged into your free account. So not a big deal. And then of course you could just click the star and then when you go back to the main page, it will be saved here. So when you go into your class, all you have to do is open the browser, click, and it's ready to go. So what if you have the paid version of Bamboozle? Well, if you have the paid version, you don't want to just copy paste that link because you won't have access to the paid games. So what I do when I want to use Bamboozle on the browser, I could log into my account on the browser and use the link that way. But I've had experience with the class in browser where I'll think I'm logged in and then I go into my class and I'm logged out. <laughs> and then I have to sign back in and my students looking at me like, what is she doing? <laughs> What's taking so long? So to avoid having to log in to your Bamboozle account on the browser, what you can do instead, let me go back here and open Bamboozle again. So this is my paid account. If you go to share and just turn on the class pin, 
and then copy this link and then go into here, paste the link and you'll see it says class pin and hit enter. Now you are able to play all of the games. I can again save this to use it later, but when you hit play, you'll see now the lock is not there. So now you are ready to go. So I don't have to even look, I'm not signed in. You don't need to be signed in because you're using your class pin, just like if you were to send that link with the class pin for your student to use outside of class. So now if I exit out, click on it again, I can still play all of the games. I don't have access to the other options, but I don't need those options because all I'm using it in class is to play with my student. So that's how you can use Bamboozle on the browser on class in. Again, all these little animations are gonna be eh, 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 very glitchy for your student. I'm not really worried about those animations. I'm more worried about like, um, on like snakes and ladders, having to see where they're going. Um, the World Pup Soccer is super glitchy, but if you're playing a game like Tic-Tac-Toe or the Memory Match or, I'll have to look at them, the Double Vision, four in a row, um, those I wouldn't be worried about the lag because there's not really a lot of animation. If they miss the X walking to the spot, not a big deal, but I don't like it for World Pup Soccer. <laughs> so how do I use it for World Pup Soccer or the Snakes and Ladders? So what I have started using, and I don't really like using Screen Share. I never have used it for anything else because I just don't like it. But it is, for me, the better option with using Bamboozle. So if I go to my toolbox again and you go to the desktop sharing, there are two options. Well, there's three, but I've never even thought to use student screen share because I don't need my students sharing their screen with me. I just need to share my screen with them. So you have desktop sharing and teacher screen sharing. So difference between the two, desktop shares audio. So all those fun sounds and animation sounds and the music you could share with the student. And of course, I almost forgot, with the browser, you can also share the sounds. So that's the benefit. With the browser, you can share sound and the student can use their tools. So like if you're picking the characters for those younger students that can't verbalize the names of the characters uh, that they want to choose, they're able to circle with their pen. So those are the other benefits I forgot to mention with the browser. You have sound and your student has access to their pen tools. With the desktop share, you have ability to share the sound, but you do not have the ability to write on it. So the teacher cannot write and the student cannot write. So you might think, why would I want to use that? Well, desktop sharing has the best, or I should say the least amount of lag. It is a lot smoother than the browser. So when I tested this as my student on the iPad, I could see the animations. I could see my character walking to get ready to kick the ball. I could see the ball being kicked into the net. It was so much smoother and the animations worked a lot better. So for my last two classes, I used desktop sharing. So with desktop sharing, I have two desktops. That's why I have two options here. So my main desktop is desktop one. And when I click share, Oh, here's my desktop. So right now my student would be seeing this entire desktop. So I would have Bamboozle opened on my desktop, taking up the whole thing. If I make it smaller like this, the student's going to see all of my junk <laughs> that I have on my desktop. I can make this smaller and move it around, but that takes way too much time. I don't bother with that. I just keep the full desktop, have it open completely on my desktop and the student can see this box that I'm in, and they also see me and themselves at the top of their screen. So they actually see double, which I thought was a little annoying at first, but then I realized, well, I can use this box since I can't write on the slides or on the screen. I can use this box to kind of help point, like, oh, here <laughs> or here. So it kind of gave me a way to point to things without having um, my tools to use. So again, the negative here is there are no tools. So down here, there is no writing tools, nothing. I can use the chat. I can use the 
chat box, the roster, hands up, but there are no tools. You cannot write and the student cannot write. But like I said, the benefit to desktop sharing is they can see everything. It looks smooth and clear. So I really like this, but it's difficult for those younger students because they don't have that ability to circle things. So with this method, you would just log in on your computer, on your account, whatever you're using for bamboozle. And then since I am on my account, my paid account, everything is unlocked because I have the paid account. So again, if they needed to click on something to pick their country, you're going to have to, either they have to answer verbally or you would just have to choose for them. My younger students, there is no way they would be able to tell me what country they want. So that can be difficult for those younger students using desktop share. But I did come up with a little trick for my younger students. I made a little EDB for my game choices here. <laughs> so that way, when I wanted to play World Cup soccer with them, before I open screen share, desktop share, I say, oh, you know, what country do you want? And then they can circle with a pen or snakes and ladders. Who do you want to be? And then they choose ahead of time. Then when I open it in desktop share, I don't need them to circle anything. I already know what they want. So little trick if you choose to use desktop sharing. And then the other type of sharing is teacher screen share. I would never use this option with Bamboozle because yes, you can get the pen, but there's no sound option to share. So, which is fine if you don't want to share the sound. So they would have no animations, no music. You could hear it, but they will not be able to hear it. But the lag is just as bad as the browser. So if I had a choice between teacher screen share and the browser, I would just use the browser because the browser has the pen still and it has the sound. And to me, it's just easier to use. You don't have the little boxes at the top. You're able to make yourself bigger if you wanted to because you're in the classroom. So personally, I would never use teacher screen sharing. I would just use the desktop. So in my opinion, <laughs> which you don't have to follow my opinion, my opinion is for games with lots of animation, I prefer to use desktop sharing. For games that have less animation, I prefer just to use the browser. So hopefully this answers some questions for anybody that's interested in trying out Bamboozle on class in or wants to use it and figuring out what is the best method. And somebody did ask me, can the students click? Well, no, that's the same for anything with class in. The students cannot click when using the browser. They cannot click when using desktop share and they can only click on teacher screen share if they are using a computer, which most of my students, and I know that's the same for a lot of students in China, most of them are using a tablet, usually, usually an iPad, and there is no way for them to click on an iPad. But the best part is Bamboozle is designed in a way to where they don't need to be able to click. Everything has either like a number that they can choose and they're able to answer verbally and then the student or the teacher can then click for the student. And trust me, even though they're not able to click, they still have just as much fun. And personally, a lot of times I don't want them to click, <laughs> especially on a game, because if they click the wrong thing, it's gonna mess up everything. If they choose that they got the answer wrong on accident when they got it right, it's just going to lead to tears. So I personally prefer, even if Class in had the ability for students to click, I don't even know if I would use it. I would prefer them not. They can have just as much fun without getting to click on the answers themselves. So if I missed anything or you think of any other questions, please let me know and I will try to answer them for you. Bye everyone.